always think I'd be an attorney. I knew I was going to be something. I didn't know if I was going to be a lawyer or a superstar. But I really could do both. So I'm going to be a superstar first, then I'm going to go do law. But it was just like I always just knew how to control crowds and woo people, like get people to go, like, Dad, I didn't know you could sing like that. I didn't know you. Like people always, I didn't know you. Be like, well, now you know. And so you could pass the word on. She was born with golden vocal cords and knew stardom was just around the corner from a very young age. It took some time, but once she was out of the gate, she was off and running. However, after years of repeatedly getting knocked down by her personal demons and toxic relationships, she couldn't take it anymore and thought the only solution was to end it all. Let's find out what happened to American R&B singer, songwriter, radio and television personality, Lil Mo. Cynthia Karen Loving, known to the world as Lil Mo, was born into a Christian family in Long Island, New York. She was only partially raised there since her family moved around a lot due to her father's military assignments. They shuffled around Texas, Atlanta, and North Carolina before finally settling just outside of Baltimore, Maryland. She began singing at the age of four in the church. Years later as a teen, she would get to hone her skills on tour, traveling around with her uncle, gospel singer and pastor, John P. Key. After graduating high school, Mo moved back to New York to attend hair school and also pursue her music career at the same time. Then, in early 1998, at the age of 19, she would catch the attention of rapper, singer, songwriter, and record producer, Missy Elliott, after submitting a demo tape to a record company for R&B singer Nicole Ray's debut album, Make It Hot. Missy invited Mo to come with her on tour and also helped her land a contract deal with that same company, Elektra Records. By the summer of that year, her debut single called Five Minutes would be released. While trying to get her album out, Mo began being featured quite a bit on tracks by other artists. She gained a tremendous amount of attention for her contributions on Missy Elliott's Hot Boys, as well as rapper Ja Rule's singles, Put It On Me and I Cry. Unfortunately, things wouldn't stay kosher between Ja and Mo for long. In early 2003, while co-hosting hip-hop and R&B music video show's spin-off series, 106 and Park Prime, Mo shouted, G-Unit, after introducing a video. At the time, Ja and G-Unit member 50 Cent were in the middle of a major beef. Naturally, the incident angered Ja and his crew, Murder Inc. Mo later claimed that she didn't think her mic was on, and assumed BET was going to edit out that part of the show. Later, Jaw released the diss track, Loose Change, which targeted several artists, including Mo. Then, Mo dissed Jaw right back on a track of her own. That wasn't the end of it though. In 2005, Mo filed a lawsuit against Ja Rule, Murder Inc., and Def Jam for $15 million in unpaid royalties for her contributions on the two tracks. However, by 2010, the two had reconciled and even recorded a track together the following year called You and Me. In the spring of 2000, Mo released the song Ta-Da. It would be the lead single on her debut album titled Based on a True Story, which would finally drop in June 2001. Just before that, she would release the song that would be her first solo successful hit, the album's second single, Superwoman Part 2. It peaked at number 11 on the Billboard Hot 100 and featured an up-and-coming rapper by the name of Fabulous. Also around this time, Mo met her first husband, Augusta Stone, at a gas station in Washington, D.C. After dating for just five months, they wed in August 2001. They would go on to have two children. Four years later, she would file for divorce. During that summer as well, a violent and potentially deadly incident happened to Mo. While leaving a concert venue in San Francisco, she was bludgeoned in the head by a man wielding a champagne bottle. She was immediately hospitalized and received nearly two dozen stitches. A reward was issued in hopes of catching the assailant, however, he was never found. While recovering from the assault, she temporarily settled down in her adopted hometown of Baltimore and began her radio career as a part-time on-air personality with urban station X105.7 WXYV-FM. The Lil Mo Show ran for a little under a year before she went back to focusing on music. 
Her second album, titled Meet the Girl Next Door, was released two years later. It included the singles Forever and Ten Commandments. The former would become a top 40 hit. Then, her label, Elektra, would eventually become absorbed by Atlantic Records, bringing Moe's contract to an end. The next year, she signed a new deal with Universal's Cash Money Records and began work on her third album. Again, she had to accept the album release being pushed back due to the singles not doing well. To add insult to injury, that album, titled Syndicated The Little Mo Hour, would end up shelved following the destruction of Cash Money's New Orleans studio by Hurricane Katrina. Mo was also then dropped from the label. She began releasing singles as an independent artist under her own production company called Honey Child Entertainment, which she founded in 2000. In 2005, a feud between Lil Mo and R&B singer Keisha Cole erupted via the syndicated radio show, The Star and Buck Wild Show. Apparently, Mo dismissed the vocal talent of a new crop of R&B performers, saying that they're more concerned with dancing instead of singing. Keisha took offense, even though Mo didn't mention any names. She ended up spotting Mo's manager and stylist in the lobby of a New York City hotel. She confronted them and told them they were traitors and that Mo was the enemy. Word got back to Mo, but she just brushed off the incident, claiming that she heard that Keisha was drunk. So she blamed her behavior on the alcohol. They would go at it again years later, when in 2013, Keisha would be criticized by urban media outlets for her Twitter critique of Beyonce's song, Bow Down, I Been On. Mo, a clear Queen Bee stan, then put her two cents in, and her and Keisha then began exchanging aggressive tweets over the next several days. Despite the experience, in May, Mo said there was no beef between her and Keisha, which led to the two exchanging more aggressive messages, again via Instagram and Twitter. In August 2007, Mo released the album Pain and Paper. None of the singles charted. The following year, she began work on her fourth album. However, plans, including turning it into a double disc full of live performances, were eventually scrapped. Things may not have been going Moe's way professionally, but personally, things were definitely on an upswing. In June 2008, she married gospel recording artist Philip Bryant. They would go on to have two children together. Sadly, the couple separated and subsequently divorced in 2014 due to his infidelity that Moe apparently found out about during a threesome. Yes, you heard that correctly. She told New York City's Power 105.1 radio station morning show, The Breakfast Club, that her and her husband would engage in threesomes by his choice. During one particular encounter, she just knew that the other woman had been with her husband before because Mo noticed that she was a little too comfortable with certain moves. Luckily, there was no need for anyone to feel sorry for Miss Mo since before the ink was even dry on the divorce papers, she'd already moved on to someone new. In May 2011, Mo released her first mixtape titled P.S. I Love You, quickly followed up just six months later with the studio album P.S. I Love Me. Two years later, she made a decision that would take her career and life to new heights. Mo became a cast member of the reality television series R&B Divas Los Angeles. As what usually happens on reality TV shows, the beefs between her and her castmates got major airtime during its three-year run, namely with Shantae Moore and Kelly Price. It was on the show that Mo also revealed a painful childhood memory. She, as well as her sister, had been molested by a member of their church. Her sister told a cousin who confronted and threatened the man, and no further incidents occurred after that. The individual never ended up suffering any legal consequences for his actions. Mo, though, went on to be a reclusive person, dressing in more masculine ways and not trusting men in general for a long time. When she did enter into intimate relationships with the opposite sex, she would self-medicate to deal with any drama or abuse that happened. 2014 would turn out to be an extremely productive year for Lil Mo, especially the month of October. Her fifth album, titled The Scarlet Letter, dropped, as well as her second mixtape, No Shit Sherlock. Additionally, her tell-all book, Taming Lil Mo, was released. That summer, she'd get into a short-lived beef with the king of funk, Prince. Mo was apparently minding her own business while trying to access a bathroom at the Essence Music Festival in New Orleans. She was denied entry by security and NOLA police 
because at the same time, the purple one was making his way through the backstage area before going on to perform. An irritated and offended Mo sounded off in a since-deleted Instagram post, and Prince responded in a series of since-deleted tweets. Mo said he didn't even hit all the damn notes, which she claimed in an exclusive interview with entertainment blog The Jasmine Brand wasn't even about Prince, but another performer. And he shut her down by saying that he hopes she knows none of her clothes match. Mo would also walk down the aisle for the third time this year. She wed professional boxer Carl Dargan, who's seven years her junior and best known for winning a gold medal at the 2007 Pan Am Games. He actually first saw her in a music video when he was just a teenager. He may have been very young, but he had the fortitude to pull a slick one, asking his cousin to book her for an event so he could make his move. Even though they did meet, Mo already being locked down in a relationship and their obvious inappropriate age difference prevented anything from transpiring until over a decade later. They would have one child together, her fifth and his fourth. To honor her husband's faith, she would also convert to Islam and would begin wearing a hijab. In January 2016, Mo found a spot once again on the radio airwaves when she began hosting the 93.9 WKYS radio show, The Fam in the Morning, with DJ Quicksilva in Washington, DC. The experience came to an abrupt end when she was fired the following year and also had a falling out with Quick. She believed that he knew what was about to go down and didn't give her a heads up. Later that year, Mo decided to try reality TV again, actually several more times. First, she joined the cast of VH1's Love & Hip Hop New York. Then she would appear along with her husband in an episode of Couples Court with the Cutlers, where she petitioned the court to give her husband a lie detector test to determine if he was cheating or not. He denied all of the accusations. However, the lie detector test determined that was a lie. Then they appeared on WeTV's Marriage Boot Camp Reality Stars 12 Hip Hop Edition, where the issue of Carl's cheating came up yet again. In early 2018, Mo faced some serious backlash over her support for her friend Fabulous concerning some domestic violence allegations. She expressed similar sentiments the following year when the Lifetime documentary Surviving R. Kelly debuted. In the same Breakfast Club interview, she admitted that even though she'd never met him and hadn't seen the documentary, she didn't understand how everything could go down the way it did, being that he had a wife and family at home, how the parents could allow their children to be in that kind of situation in the first place, and why the victims waited so long to speak up. Mo faced more backlash again over comments she made criticizing R&B singer Queen Nigel's performance at the 2018 Soul Train Awards. She later clarified her statement to RatedR&B.com, saying that in her opinion, Nigel shouldn't have sung on stage while pregnant. She went on to explain that as a singer herself, she doesn't do that because of how it affects her breathing. Nigel's performance also followed one by Kelly Price. And even though they butted heads in the past on R&B Divas, Mo acknowledges and respects her tremendous talent and said even she wouldn't want to go on after Kelly. In October of that year, Mo announced on her Instagram that the time had come for her to move away from music and follow her other passion of becoming a lawyer. However, things didn't turn out that way. In the early part of 2019, Mo announced that she had left Carl after an exchange between them that for her was the last straw. He spat on her in front of their children during an argument. Interestingly enough, it was the same day they returned home from marriage boot camp. Also that year, Mo admitted that she was hooked on opioids and lived as a functional drug addict. In fact, the interview her and Carl did with The Breakfast Club in January as promo for the show happened after the spitting incident while they were already on the outs. In the same year, she revealed in an interview with DJ Quicksilva after they had patched up their friendship that she was spending hundreds of dollars a day on substances to not just get high for the sake of the feeling, but to just be able to not have to deal with anything, including her children. She also spoke about the different manners of abuse she endured from her husband, including physical violence and threats to end her life. He didn't need to do that. 
Mo already had thoughts of doing the same thing to herself. Those thoughts even go back many years, as she was also struggling with anxiety and depression. This time, she decided to get clean, focus on her children, and scrub her social media. 2021 has been another successful year for Lil Mo. She released a couple of singles, Broken Heart, and her latest, Shining Star, featuring rappers T-Pain and Fat Man Scoop in anticipation of her upcoming album titled Savage Heart that's been in the works for the last two years. On September 14th, Mo took to the stage with Ja Rule to participate in his Instagram Live versus battle against rapper Fat Joe. Mo did her thing, but before that, Joe decided to make an inappropriate and disrespectful comment towards Mo and rapper Vita, who was also in attendance to support Ja. You had to bring Remy to save you. This is fucking pathetic. You yo, got all go. the mother dusty bitches hey, yo, back there, ja. In the coming days, Mo would speak to TMZ about how vile and triggering the comment was and how disappointed she was in him. Joe would later apologize. This year also marks the 20th anniversary of Lil Mo's debut album, based on a true story. Thanks for watching. Please like, share, and comment. Also, don't forget to subscribe and turn on your notifications so you won't miss any future videos. See you next time.